lockdown policies worldwide will create a, a devastating global economic depression. That depression will kill people, large numbers of people. The global economic collapse will cost lives of, of, I believe, millions of people. And not just in the United States, I mean worldwide. Literally billions of people's lives are at stake from a, a global economy that's not functioning well. There have been people who have delayed their chemotherapy as a result of the lockdown. They've, they've had heart attacks and not gone to the doctor. They've had, uh, there, there's, I just saw a report that uh, estimating, you know, nearly uh, uh, 75,000 people additional will have committed suicide or, or as a result of the, the lockdown, maybe for these, these deaths of despair. Uh, Wait, over the course of next year. Worldwide? Or no, U.S. If the economy is ruined, you have unemployment, you have poverty, you have bankruptcies, you have uh, uh, lots of diseases that are associated with this sort of social and economic disruption. We have strong evidence that that can lead to an increase in depression, in anxiety, in suicides, uh, in heart attacks, uh, in common things, in, in things that cumulatively could have a much higher impact on deaths compared to what uh, SARS-CoV-2 can achieve on, on its own. Social isolation actually leads to upregulation of, of inflammatory compounds in the body and downregulation of antiviral compounds. So you're basically increasing the person for viral infection by the amount of stress you're causing them from social isolation. And separate from that, we're telling people not to go out in the sun, which is vitamin D. Vitamin D is an antimicrobial. Mm -hmm. So this is essentially a recipe for actually hurting people more people will die from the unemployment than from corona. And these are different people, much younger. They are the bread provider of families. More people will die from unemployment. So my view is that shutdown is lunacy. Das fällt jetzt alles weg. Sie können davon ausgehen, dass diese Maßnahmen insgesamt die Lebenserwartung dieser 2200 Menschen verkürzen wird. Dann haben wir natürlich die wirtschaftlichen Folgen, die so horrend sind und für viele existenzgefährdend. Und letztlich haben wir natürlich die direkten medizinischen Folgen. Wir haben jetzt schon Engpässe bei der Versorgung. Es können Operationen nicht durchgeführt werden. Es können kranke Menschen nicht versorgt werden, optimal versorgt werden. Personal wird abgezogen oder fehlt in den Krankenhäusern, weil die Mütter auf ihre Kinder aufpassen müssen. Das sind alles Dinge, die natürlich auch noch schlimmer Folgen haben werden. Ich kann nur sagen, diese Maßnahmen sind selbstzerstörerisch und dass wenn die Gesellschaft die akzeptiert und durchführt, gleich dieses einem kollektiven Selbstmord. It is no doubt in my mind that when we come to look back on this, the damage done by lockdown will exceed any saving of lives by a huge factor. There is no question if you shut down the economy of the United States and other countries in the Western world, that this is creating hardship that, at a scale that is difficult to imagine. I really worry that unless we manage to have a viable plan to exit from lockdown and shelter in place and reopen our world, the consequences will be far worse than coronavirus. Now, in addition to the testimony that they've shared with you, I want to go further into this. I want to help you understand that the true danger we face with, it's not the disease, guys. It's the fear-mongering. It's the authorities. And this has been the problem throughout history. I've been on about this for over 10 years. For thousands of years, this has been the cancer. Okay? This has been the problem. If society was a collective body, this is a problem of gangrene. And if you don't chop off the finger or find a way to eliminate it, it's going to infect the rest of the body and kill the host. Now, I'm not saying we need a violent revolution. Don't take my words out of context, but we need a revolution of the mind. We need to wake up and realize 
who the real enemy is in all of this. It's not left and right and black and white and religion and atheist and so on and so forth. It's elitism. Okay, elitism. So as you can see, and I just want to help you guys develop a very keen understanding of this so you can defend yourself. And like I said, um, we will go into some detail later on. I will share a blog with you that I wrote on how you can deal with depression and how you can deal with stress and so on and so forth. Because that is the key right now. How to defend yourself from the ignorance and the fear mongering. So you see our psychological stress can not only increase susceptibility to infection, but it also impairs wound healing and enhances hypersensitivity inflammatory states. So that means that the fear alone can make you sick, guys. And it, it goes, it snowballs. It's way more than just that. So stress contributes to a range of chronic diseases. And these are all different studies. You can go look them up. All published, all peer-reviewed. Stress levels linked to risk of liver disease, death, uh, stress and cancer. Through the, they call it the master switch. So stress aggravates cancer. Stress and diabetes are linked directly together. Inflammatory arthritis. Anger stress dysregulation produces wear and tear on the lungs, so it also damages your lungs. Yeah, we also have an upper respiratory infection, so that means it can easily contribute to getting so called COVID 19, guys, or pneumonia, or many other diseases. And then the big one study finds how stress raises heart disease and stroke. And then beyond that, for example, they did a study over here where it shows that. The largest ever investigation into low-level mental health problems suggests it can shorten life expectancy. So stress and anxiety, even low levels, prolonged period, that can shorten your life expectancy. Researchers from the University of Edinburgh and University College London studied data from 68,000 adults, and they found that even small amounts of stress and anxiety could lead to an early death. Again, yeah, yeah, I'll study. The evidence for this is just it's overwhelming, guys, how dangerous stress is. And in this way, the media, the establishment media, the authorities, what they're doing is criminal. They're putting our lives at risk. They're putting our loved ones at risk. And that is what I'm going to get into, right, Chad? Yeah. Okay, not just what those scientists and professors and so on and so forth um, explain to you, but we're, gonna, we're going to explore it in detail because I want you to understand how serious this is, guys. It's, it's criminal. It's criminal. Yeah, we see emotional stress as a trigger in SCD, which is sudden cardiac death. Between 20 and 40% of sudden cardiac deaths, so that's like a heart attack, are precipitated by acute emotional stresses. And yeah, you see uh, just a quick example that I want to share with you. Mondays is the most likely time the study actually showed SCD incidence peaks from 6 a.m. to noon on Monday mornings. And then conversely, the lowest is over the weekend, right, when we're chilling. So it shows that there's a strong component with stress, guys. Stress is, it's paramount. We are being misled where we're not actually being informed and properly enlightened about how to maintain good health. We live in a society that is in conflict with empowerment and enlightenment, unfortunately. And that is because it comes from the top down. It's policy. If you look close enough into everything, and I've shown you enough convincing evidence thus far with the big tobacco companies and uh with the big sugar companies, buying scientists, working with governments, deregulating, it's, it's just crazy. And the only way out of this, I don't want to overwhelm you and say, damn, you know, the world is screwed and it's Armageddon and it's... No, guys, we just have to awaken. And right now, partly why this is happening is because so many people are awakening. There's a deeper agenda here, and I'm going to get into that a bit later. And yeah, we got also triggered by earthquakes. So just to make it very clear that sudden cardiac deaths, and this is happening to people right now, it's happening. They are putting people's lives at risk. It's untenable, it's indefensible, and it's unforgivable, in my opinion. Yeah, you see, and this was just from uh, April 16th, this article. Anti-anxiety medication prescriptions are up 34% since coronavirus. And you don't have to even see headlines or studies to know that people are very scared right now. People are shit scared. And it's not their fault. They've just been misled by our trusted authorities. And then, yeah, you see, up to one in five hospitalized patients have signs of heart injury. And, you know, the doctors, they are just puzzled by this. It's a mystery. Mysterious heart damage. You know, they don't understand. They're also developing heart problems and dying of cardiac arrest. But when you see that the pharmaceutical industry, based on this 
study right here shows the pharmaceutical industry funds about half of the cost of continuing medical education programs in the US and who knows elsewhere what the statistics are like is probably comparable. That to me explains why they have become so idiotic. I mean, you cannot deduce based, I just showed you a bunch of evidence about the clear, very, very clear, crystal clear link between stress and it damaging the heart or causing heart attacks. So now they, they, can't, they cannot ascertain something so elementary and simple. It's a mystery. No, it's not a mystery. You are faced with unprecedented stress. So people right now are naturally developing heart problems. I mean, that should at least be considered, don't you think? I mean, it's been that way. We've got so much evidence that confirms that. But of course, these former funded doctors, they just don't know their arse from their elbow. And then beyond that, chronic stress obviously leads to anxiety and depression. The problem with that is depression is the number one cause of ill health and disability worldwide, according to the World Health Organization. That, that's a big deal, guys. I mean... Last time I checked this, it's something like several hundred million people suffer from depression and who knows how many suffer from it that we don't even have statistics or we have an accurate uh, potential figure for. And then these guys over here, they did a study on the psychological impact of quarantine and how to reduce it. And they found that quarantine is associated with poor mental health, specifically post-traumatic stress symptoms, avoidance behaviors and anger. And this was just for more than 10 days that this began to emerge, guys. They also found that children had higher post-traumatic stress scores, four times higher than those who were not quarantined. So this COVID-19, it's relatively insipid based on everything that I've shown you. Yes, some people will die, guys. But that happens with the flu. Okay, some healthy people will die. But that happens every day. Doesn't mean we have to shut down the world economy and act completely crazy and traumatize people and isolate them with these quarantines. It's counterproductive. It's not just counterproductive, it's an attack. That's what people don't realize. And I'm gonna get into that later on. This is very, very skillful and deliberate. And it may not be deliberate on all government's parts. I don't wanna even make that leap. There's a lot of good people within governments. There's a lot of good people within these banks and these corporations and even these intelligence agencies and even in the pharmaceutical companies. It's just at the higher echelons. They have sinister intentions. And yeah, we see social isolation also, guys, linked to type 2 diabetes. They did a study on mice, and that's relevant because mice have similar immune responses and also neurological responses as we do, and it showed it worsens cancer, social isolation. Yeah, we go again, loneliness isolation is linked to a heightened risk of heart disease and stroke, up to 30% increased risk. A lot of people are going to be prematurely dying because of the stress and the social isolation, guys. And here we go again, linked to a higher risk of all causes of premature death. So I'm just putting into perspective right now. What's happening? It will far exceed. Millions of people sadly are going to die. They're going to suffer. They're going to be traumatized. Bad things are going to happen, but not because of COVID-19. Because of the authoritarian reactions and measures being taken and imposed on us, by the ruling class. And of course, unemployment. Rising unemployment causes higher death rates. We have a lot of evidence for that too. Unemployment tied to premature death study. Unemployment associated with 50% higher risk of heart death in heart failure patients. And this again is because for anybody that's ever been unemployed, it's very stressful. Right? It's very stressful for a number of different reasons. I mean, I'm financially struggling at the moment. It is very stressful. And I'm sure a lot of you are too. That's why we have to collectively stand together and figure out how can we change this? How can we awaken people to what's really going on here? And you have to have courage to do that. But at the same time, if you're standing with the truth, guys, it doesn't matter if they're standing with authority. If authority is wrong, they're wrong. Don't fear. Don't fear standing up for the truth. Heart attack related deaths were sharply after the 2008 crash. He has another thing that's definitely going to turn out is Global economic downturn linked with at least 260,000 excess cancer deaths. There's going to be a lot of excess deaths right now because people are either too scared to seek out the help they need or they're being overlooked because COVID-19 has become the, you know, the main focus. Uh, we have to clear out all the hospital patients. We have to overlook people who have very serious illnesses because of COVID-19. It's outrageous. Then, of course, suicide. 
People have no idea. Suicide is a major problem, guys. You know, we see 800,000 people commit suicide every year. I think the exact figure is actually 794,000. But it's roughly 800,000 each year. And that's one person around every 40 seconds. These figures also, they skyrocket when unemployment goes up or when there's social isolation or, of course, fear. All of those things produce high levels of suicide. As you can see, a study they did with the 2000 global economic crisis, this showed that suicide rates were severely impacted. And yeah, just a headline, unfortunately, this poor young lady, 19 years old, beautiful and charming, she killed herself because she just couldn't have faced isolation. Same with this dude, yeah, and there's many, many stories. Wouldn't be surprised if we don't hear about all of them either because a lot of governments obviously have a vested interest to find a way to justify the ridiculous actions they've taken. There's another study, unemployment causes 45,000 suicides a year. Well, we're faced with an unprecedented level of unemployment right now, guys. The implications are just colossal. Yeah, also in Japan, there's a study showing the correlation between unemployment and suicide. And of course, there's household air pollution, which I mentioned earlier, right? I still gave you a low figure earlier per year. Over here, the World Health Organization claims 3.8 million people die every single year from indoor air pollution, guys. That's a huge, huge figure. And that will probably be exacerbated right now because of what's going on with everybody being forced indoors. Also this, this is another dimension that people are considering. This report over here from the US government showed that trafficking, which, and just to quickly put this into perspective, human trafficking is human slavery, guys. That's just a politicized term. And there are more slaves today than at any time in human history. And they come in all skin colors, just as they actually did throughout history. And most people don't even know about. And if you look into the actual information, there's more of them today than at any time in human history. Most of them are in India, but nobody's talking about that. And whenever there's a, a financial crisis, such as this one, guess what happens, guys? Unfortunately, that skyrockets. And you can be damn sure that's precisely what's going to be happening again now. The same with child abuse and child trafficking. I mean, this is a very skillful, indirect declaration of war. And those who are awakened are aware of this. Trying to wake everybody else up to it is the difficult part. And like I said, don't get scared. Fear is counterproductive. All right, it's absolutely unnecessary. We don't have to be scared, guys. We just have to stick together, realize that we outnumber them by at least like 100 million to one. Really, it's not the 1%, it's the 0.01%. And if we can simply awaken to this, then we can create positive change. I mean, they are the least among us. If you take a look at these cats at the highest level, because way in the background, we have families like the Rockefeller family. If you take a look at them, these cats are not, I mean, what are, do they know Kung Fu? I mean, are they going to hand-to-hand combat? And, no, of course not. They're Mickey Mouses beyond all their manipulative propaganda. They, they derive their power through controlling our perceptions and working and playing us against each other. But beyond that, they have no power of their own. None. Yeah, we see, for example, India's lockdown reality, 92,000 calls of child abuse in 11 days. And domestic abuse calls are up. Yeah, in the UK, in France, and there's also a direct link, guys, studies show between rises in child abuse and mass unemployment. The, the evidence for all of this is overwhelming. So that's why I said it is unjustifiable. It is indefensible. And like I said, it's unforgivable. What they're doing is unforgivable because they are putting people's lives at risk. And it's not like governments have just started making stupid decisions. And I want to be a bit more precise because... Governments, there are good people within governments. It's more so the shadow government. And this is pharmaceutical companies and different intelligence agencies and different members of the government. It's, all, it's people within these institutions, secret societies. It's not all of them. It's members. And those ones who are maliciously and consciously and deliberately doing this are predators. And we need to find a way to stand together and help everybody become aware of this so that we can free ourselves from their rapacious influence. And we see again unemployment triggers increase in child neglect. And then of course our animal friends. They're also suffering because of this guys. Cats and dogs, the, the relationship we've had with them, and how many of them have been abandoned? That's horrible. That's right.
And yeah, there's a study that shows just within the United States, they claim that 75,000 quote unquote deaths of despair, as was mentioned in the video, from suicide, drug, and alcohol abuse. 75,000 deaths from that alone, guys. And it's probably going to be larger. That's the sad reality. And yeah, we have a modeling study. It claims that the coronavirus lockdown could lead to nearly 1.5 million extra tuberculosis deaths. So it's important that we consider the totality of this equation. You know, in my mind, everything that we have seen, the conflicts of interest, the media propaganda, the fear mongering, it's, it's outrageous. And I just, I just hope everybody has the capability to still critically think just a little bit for yourself and realize just how criminal all of this is.